Hi, welcome along to the AFTV Arsenal Fan TV Transfer Daily, the program where we take a look at all the players who've been linked with a January transfer move to Arsenal. There are only now two days left today and tomorrow, and then tomorrow the window slams shut, and that will be it. That will be over. And you know what? The stress will be off my head. The stress will be off your head. We'll know either who we've got or who we haven't got, or if we've got anybody. It will all be revealed by 11 o'clock tomorrow. Let's take a look at the rumours that are circulating around today. There's only one rumour in town, and it's Julian Draxler. It's the, it's the, apart from the matter deal, it's the biggest news of the transfer window across any team in the Premier League. He's been linked with a move to Arsenal all January. Uh, one minute is on, one minute is off. There definitely seems to be some serious movement on this deal right now. Um, it's been reported in a few of the newspapers, heavily reported, that this deal is going to get done. The Daily Mail are saying that um, you know Schalke need to ease some of their financial problems, and even though they've been playing kind of hardball with it, they are willing to do a deal with Arsenal. Arsenal want to do it for about thirty million. Um, Schalke are trying to hold out for about thirty-five million. But it appears that Schalke are softening on this and are keen to get business done. Um, it's also been reported in The Guardian, where we heard yesterday about a delegation going over to Germany to um, speak to Schalke. That's how serious Arsenal are about this one. And um, one of the negotiating team is Dick Law, who's Arsenal's chief transfer negotiator. He's out there in Germany now. If they didn't think this was a deal that they could get done, he wouldn't be over there. So he's over there. He's working hard um, with that Arsenal delegation to try and get that deal done. They're confident that they're going to get it done. And if they can make it happen, it will be something that all Arsenal fans will be overjoyed about. I mean, Skybet have dropped their odds on this deal happening to 1-8. to eight. So that shows you that... There is a buzz about this deal. There is a buzz about it. I mean, we've spoken about it the whole of the January transfer window. We knew that if it was going to get done, we know Arsene Wenger already, and we know Arsene. We knew that it would be a last-minute thing, and um, this is how it's turning out to be. If it is going to happen, we're probably going to find out about it by tomorrow. But Arsenal are serious about this one. They're over there in Germany at the moment. They're trying to get it done. They're trying to add another player to their German contingent. And Draxa seems to be their number one target. Coupled with the fact that there's been injuries to players like Theo Walcott, vital players, you know, Draxler makes sense. He, he can play across um, on the wings. Um, he can play as a striker, that, which is um, apparently the long-term um, thing, what they want to do with him. Um, he'll probably have a fight with Theo Walcott about that. But, um, that's one of the ideas also that Arsenal have. And he's only 20 years old, so... Even if they spend that sort of money on him and he lives up to his billing, which is one of the best young players in European football, I mean, you know, even if they hold on to him for five years, he'd still only be 25. Even if they wanted to sell him after that, they'd still have a massive resale value on him. So it does make sense um, to Arsenal, typical Arsenal-type signing, and it is one that definitely could happen. So we're going to have to watch this space today and tomorrow, but definitely every single news outlet out there is reporting that this deal is one that's going to get done, and normally that means that it will get over the line. Um, we saw that with the matter thing last week where everybody was reporting that this was going to get done, and um, it got over the line. We'll have to wait and see with this, because we have seen before with Higuain and Suarez that everybody was reporting that that was going to get done, and it didn't get over the line. I think the one sticking point on, on this Draxler deal is whether it's going to happen now or whether it's going to be a summer deal. Because Schalke would, in an ideal world, like to hold on to him till at least the summer, but it looks like Arsenal would like him right now. What a boost it would give to every Arsenal fan and to the Arsenal team, um, you know, pushing for the title this season to bring in a young, talented player like that. It'd be absolutely brilliant and kick us on again and make us stronger and put that fear factor into other teams when they come to play us. Another signing that has been really, really um, hotting up again, um, again, we've been speaking about this all throughout the transfer window, is Mirko Vucinic. Mirko Vucinic, Montenegrin player, really, really talented player. All right, 
swan song of his career now. He's now 30 years old. But over the past few years, he's been one of the top strikers around Europe, you know, um, instrumental in when Juventus won the title in 2012-2013. Now, he's been finding it difficult to get into the team, as I've been saying, right throughout the window. Juventus want to sell him. They've been looking to get about £8 million for him. There was this deal where he was going to go on a swap deal for Freddie Goring to... Um, he was going to go to Inter Milan, Goring going the other way to Juventus. That's falling through. Arsenal now apparently back in for Vucinic. They see him as a, a striker who could come in in a short-term loan basis, which is not really what Juventus want to do. They want to really sell him and get money back for him. But if they can't, get him off the wage bill, you know, and they've got a very expensive wage bill at the moment, Juventus. And as I said, they've got players like Tevez and Lorente already there as strikers. Getting him off the wage bill would be absolutely brilliant for them and it makes sense for them. And Vucinic would be good for Arsenal, a good player who could come in um, as a backup to Olivier Giroud, a player of real pedigree, you know, a, a really, really good player. This this is no mug, um, Vucinic. Would be a, I think it would be an excellent loan signing if we could get him from now till the end of the season. There have been reports going around. Tuto Sport, which is an um, Italian media outlet, reporting that um, he's supposed to be in London for a medical today. Um, well, we're going to have to watch his space and see how, see if he does come in for a medical today. I mean, if you do see him in London today for a medical, make sure you let Arsenal Fan TV know so we can try and get down there. But, um, yeah, that is another one that is really, really, you know, doing the rounds out there that Mirko Vucinic could be the player coming in. By the way, if you want to uh, send, um, send us in a comment, let us know who you, you know, want to come in. You know, if there's any left field sort of strikers that you'd like to see us sign, let us know. You can comment right now. Just got to tell you also about some of the other targets that Arsenal have been looking at it, 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 all throughout the transfer window that, again, are being linked. Alvaro Morata, again, has been spoken about that, you know, a last-minute deal could be in the off in there. And, again, it's all boiling down to the wire. Um, there's been lots of claims and counterclaims regarding some of these players, but we're going to find out over the next couple of days what happens with them. Christian Tello is another one at Barcelona. Um, Arsenal definitely been looking at Tello. They've been looking at Tello. They're interested in Tello. Um, you know, basically, listen, in the transfer window, if you're a club and you're sensible about this transfer window, you have to look at several targets because you may not get the target, particularly in January, that you want. So you've got to keep your options open. So maybe Draxler is the main target, but Tello could be an option if that doesn't come through. Tello on loan. Um, another player that also been looking at is Isaac Cuenca. Um, yet another one of the um, superb stars that they have there in Barcelona. Um, Bit injury prone Cuenca, you know, who's really flying in his career. Uh, went on loan to Ajax, picked up a, a bad knee injury. But again, another player that Arsenal have been looking at um, with a possibility for, to bring in in this transfer window. I very much doubt with the Cuenca thing. As I said, the, the injuries that he's had will be off putting, I think, to Arsene Wenger to want to, to wanna bring Cuenca in. Um, and another player that's been heavily linked since yesterday is Blaise Matuidi. Now, Blaise Matuidi, 26-year-old de defensive midfielder, also were interested in signing him previously, um, but weren't able to pull off a deal. He plays for Paris Saint-Germain. Now, we know what's happened at Paris Saint-Germain. They've just bought Johan Kobayi. Matuidi's been finding it difficult to get in the team as it is with their midfield. They've got a blazing midfield they have um Blazing, as I say, Blaze Matweedy. They've got Blazing midfield um, at Paris Saint Germain. And Matweedy, who's also only got six months of his contract left, um, you know, it makes sense. I mean, Matthew Flamini out for four games, um, Arteta just coming back from injury, bit of backup in that position, and Matweedy could be that player. And I know that Arsenal were interested in signing him before, and if you've seen him play, he's a big, imposing player would suit Arsenal down to the ground. Obviously, he'd have to come in and hit the ground running. But Blaise Matuidi, again, another option. Maybe Arsenal could buy him, or maybe they could try and loan him till the end of the season. As I said, he will be out of contract at the end of the season at Paris Saint-Germain. But again, another player that has been linked heavily with a move to, to Arsenal. Let's have a look at some of the comments that are coming in. Um, Johnny Q says, I'd love Griezmann here. He's a little expensive but he's a brilliant player. 
So Griezmann, again, another player that's been heavily linked, but the links have dropped off a lot on that one recently. Probably looks like he's going to stay um, in Spain until the end of the season. Um, Michael, he says, uh, oh, he's, he's probably, his copy just disappeared. Oh, he, no, no, I've got him back here. He says, we're probably going to sign a player that we're barely linked with, like Ozil. Well, 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 you know, you, you never know with Arsene Wenger. He, he might just bring in um, a player left field. Um, Johnny Q also says, I think he's talking about Vucinic here. He says he's a glorified Berbatov. He's great, but has a tendency to be slow and lazy. That's, that is the only thing with Vucinic. He's not, he's not the quickest player um, in the world, but he is a really sort of strong, a really sort of rough and tough um, striker. And he's got great skill as well. And I, I, I think definitely, you know, listen, that I, I, I think fancy that would be a good signing. Um, Camille has said, uh, let's get Pato. He's doing fine in America right now. And he knows European football. Again, my thing has always been on Pato is the injuries. You know, listen, we have so many problems with injuries. Do we really want another player that's going to come in with a potential of getting another injury? And, and that's the only thing that worries me with Pato. Great player. But mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. And I, I, it doesn't look like Arsenal are going for Pato because they would have made their moves, and there's been nobody sort of you know out there um, in South America trying to sign um, Pato. So I, I'm not sure. I don't think that one's going to happen. Um, Fabian Iron says we've been linked with Blaise Matuidi after Kabai went to PSG, but he said he can't see it happening. There is a possibility that that could happen, you know, because. As I said, you know, his contract right now um, is running down at PSG. It makes sense for PSG. You know, they've got they've got an abundance of midfield players right now, especially in bringing in um, Kabay. Maybe they might go and sign him. You know, I I, I wouldn't write that one off um, completely. Um, there is a possibility that could happen. Um, Ike says uh, we should sign Draxler, Matuidi, and Vucinic. Um, um, th those are three players that he would like us to bring in. And listen, the Draxler one is the one for me. I really love to see. I think Draxler and, and Vucinic would be two very good signings for Arsenal if they could make those happening. And Kinkle says uh, Matuidi finding it hard to get into the team. Um, team. No, I think you say it like this. Matuidi find it hard to get into the team. He's been rested, he says. And um, he was voted their best player last year. So he's sort of saying it like um, it's unlikely that we'll sign him up. As I said, you can't be too sure of that because Matuidi's contract is running down and they've just bought in Kabaye. You never know. You never know. Um, and uh, I'm going to read this last one before I go to some of the comments that you sent in yesterday. This is Abdul, the alchemist. He said, Draxler and Vucinic look almost certain to come to Arsenal, um, but I don't want to jinx it. We definitely will buy a player or two in this January transfer window. Sorry, the comments are really blazing in. I'm trying to get for as many as I can. And says, uh, Almas, put, Almas Z puts a question to me. He said, Robbie, who would you prefer, Vucinic or Berbatov? Again, I think I'd have to say Berbatov purely for the fact, listen, I think they're both on the same level um, as players, but I purely probably go Berbatov purely for the fact that he already plays in the Premier League, so he knows the Premier League, he knows the opposition players he's up, going to be up against week in, week out, so he'd be able to hit the ground running easier than Vucinic. But, listen, Vucinic for me... I've been watching that guy over the past few years. He's a very, very good player, and I think that'd be a good loan signing for Arsenal, a very intelligent and good loan signing for Arsenal, and I wouldn't be against that at all if that is the player that we bring in. Let me just go to some of the comments um, that you left yesterday on the old iPad here um, after yesterday's show. Uh, Joe Reyes says Munain would, um, would be great as well. He's fast, skillful, has vision, and a pretty good eye for goal. Um, I'd like to see him come to Arsenal in the near future. I think that one, again, is if it, that does happen, is more of a move that could happen in the summer. Uh, Retro 666 Future says, Draxler or Grenier? Let it happen. Grenier, of course, heavily linked with a move to Newcastle. Newcastle have made a bid for him. Um, there was talk about Grenier last, um, see, last year in the summer, um, but I'm not sure if Arsenal are interested in signing Grenier right about now. 
Uh, Mehdi says, Matweedy right now, please. Or a CDM just like him. Uh, I think Matweedy would be a good look. Um, especially, as I said, with Flamini missing four games, um, he could come in and do a job. Um, 1981 ENI says, I kind of like it if Wenger waits until the end of the transfer window to buy players. For instance, there was no need to buy a defensive midfielder since we've got Flamini and Arteta, but now he's in serious need and we'll go and get Matuidi. Draxler and Matuidi is all I want for the winter. <laughs> he says he, he likes Wenger's last minute things. I'm not sure if I do, man. It's not good for the heart. It's not good for the stress waking up every morning trying to find out who, you know, second guessing Arsene Wenger is almost impossible. <laughs> and we've learned not to do that over the years. Um, Utabi Aguna says, oh, the transfers that have surfaced today, he says. Draxler reported, reportedly getting closer. Vucinic loan medical reportedly to, um, tomorrow, which he means today. And on top of it, a strong midfielder, Matuidi, reportedly close. Exactly what we need to finish off the season. Wenger knows. Again, listen, remember, guys, these are rumours. None of these are done deals yet. I mean, if some of those can happen, it would be absolutely um, amazing. Um, Zane Khan says, we've got to get Draxler. And you know what? That is more or less, you know, saying what nearly everybody is saying, that they would love us um, to get Draxler. Last one here. Um, Nid Charian says, I hope Arsenal are watching how quickly and effectively PSG have completed the purchase of Johan Kobay. They offered an initial 40 million that was rejected by Newcastle. They went back with an improved offer of 19 million, and then it was a done deal. Arsenal have lost out on some big signings over the last 10 years. Arsene Wenger wasn't willing to improve the initial offer because he didn't want to pay more uh, for what the player was valued at. If Arsene Wenger continues to stick to this principle, we will continue to lose big names to clubs like Paris Saint-Germain, Chelsea, and Manchester City. Hope they don't become stingy on the Draxler deal and pay Schalke what they want. <laughs> now, listen, you can't just pay it, you know, every club what they want. You do have to sort of have a sort of stinginess, not over-the-top stinginess, but you have to, you know, it's a bit of transfers is a brinkmanship game. If you just go out there and every single player that's out there, you just say, how much do you want for him? And they say, yeah, um, we want 50 million. Oh, here it is. How much do you want for him? That's not, you can't do business like that. You have to try and hold out a bit and try and, and see if you can get the price to come down. It makes sense to try and get that price to come down because every club is going to overvalue their player at first. It's a bit like when you're selling something sometimes, there's a lot of bartering goes on. I, I take his point that we have lost out on targets in the past, targets that we've desperately needed because we've been too stingy on the money. I mean, I refer to the Higuain deal in the summer. I think Higuain would have been a massive star at Arsenal, would have been a brilliant striker at Arsenal if we were to sign him. And that is one where I think, you know, our stinginess on that occasion and holding out meant that we missed out on the Higuain deal. But it doesn't mean that every player you see, you just say, yeah, well, how much you want for him and just write a blank check. You can't do that in business. And a football club, as well as being the love of our lives, is also a business as well. So, you know, we, we do have to respect that. Listen, um, that's the end of the show today. Um, thanks for watching. We've got our last show tomorrow. Plus, we're going to be down at the Emirates Stadium. We're going to be um, seeing who's going to be coming through that door. So make sure you check out our AFTV Transfer Daily um, special tomorrow, where we'll be following the transfer window right to its conclusion. We're also going to be doing some little special links up, link ups um, as well. But uh, I'm starting to get a bit excited now about this Draxler deal. You know, if that happens, I think it's something that can kick us on again. We see the results last night. Chelsea dropping points. Listen, it's going to be, we said it, I said it yesterday, teams are going to drop points. All right, Manchester City, they rolled over Tottenham. Well, that's not hard, but they rolled over um, Tottenham at White Hart Lane. But even them, they're not going to have a perfect run till the end of the season. We're still in there, one point behind. A signing like Draxler or a Vucinic, can push us on again to that next level. Arsene Wenger, Dick Law, Ivan Gazidis, make it happen. Make it happen. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>